All right, check it out, y'all. I got this Panasonic 3DO FZ10. Does not work. I've got a theory. So the laser does not move. It acts like it wants to play a game, but it doesn't move. We're going to try a game. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to copy a Gex. There's a screen. Ignore the mess, as always. Can we get some focus? There we go. Focused. We'll close the game or close the door. Right. Black screen. I don't know if you can hear that. That noise is very important. It's going to keep doing that, keep doing that, whatever, whatever, right? So we'll go back to opening this. It's not going to play. You'll see. It's trying to read, but the laser is in the same position. And it doesn't matter if I move it manually or not. It'll stay in that position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this bad boy up, and I'm going to force that laser to move. Uh, I'm going to force the motor by using a 9-volt battery. Let's try that now. So this is a fairly simple and straightforward process. So we got the CD drive here. It is secured by this piece of tape. No big deal, just pull that off. However you want to do it, take it off all together, leave it on there so you can stick it later. These little plastic pogs have to come up. The best way that I can tell you to do it is to set of uh, pliers or something similar and just push down so you can get a grip on this and pull it up. Very easy. Good to go. Pull this up and you've got, I think, three ribbon cables under here. This one here. You've got this other cable here, which is not a, a ribbon cable, but you want to be very careful not to tear that. And you got these two over here, which you can't really see, but they're there, right? And this is what we're looking at right here. This is what we're focused on. We can actually go ahead and pull this off. This is the cable that goes to the motor. I always try to pull up the plastic piece, not pulling the wires so we don't damage them. Look at the pitch. Get out of there. There you go. All right. So we're going to focus on this. What we've got here, we've got an orange. I can't, I'm fucking colorblind as fuck. It looks like orange and red to me. We're going to desolder those, right? We're going to solder our own wires on there. Like so. Orange to the right, red to the left. Wait for it to heat up. There we go. Alright, there we go. On side of that shit, or D side, or whatever you want to call it. Get my fan going so I don't breathe the shit into. So my theory is that the motor is locked up and it just does not want to move. So we're going to solder our own wires on there temporarily. <clears throat> and then we're going to hit it with a 9 volt battery and make that bitch move. We're gonna see if that actually fixes our problem. So, we're gonna have one line of the wire on the positive terminal, the terminal, one on the negative. Ooh, and that moves, so that's good. We're gonna do the same thing in reverse. All right, so, motor works. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna check. Uh, we're gonna check the lines going to the little connection that powers the motor and see if there's an issue there. But I think that'll work. 
done that a couple times with uh, different consoles in the past and that has worked. And you want to be extremely careful not to let these fucking wires get in the way so we don't burn them. That's fucking annoying. Let's move that back down there. Now while I'm in here, I guess I can go ahead and clean the rails up and re-grease them too. There really isn't much to that. If you haven't done that before, I highly suggest that you do that with any uh, disc-based systems that you Oh, and I got a little bit of alcohol here. I got a little alcohol here, some rubbing alcohol, so 99%. I'm just gonna rub that all over here, and then uh, use a little white lithium grease. You can get this stuff off Amazon, or if you've got a local uh, electronic shop of any sort near you, which I don't see very often, you get it there too, I suppose, or like an automotive store, maybe even. That's a lot. I don't really need that much, but that's fine. It's fine. Anyway, good to go. So, that's done. I'm going to go ahead and reseat this bad boy. And I'm going to clean off the laser too while I'm at it. This actually comes off. Uh, let's see. I don't want too much liquid on there, but just clean that up and clean this area off here. I don't know, just being thorough, that's all. So, let's see, I'm going to start with the farthest ribbon cable first and work my way back. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Move that capacitor back where it was. Start with this one. Sorry, I'm not. You're not going to be able to see a whole lot of this. I want to make sure I get it in there properly and not to worry too much about trying to expose that area for the camera. Right? Bam! Turn that on. I'm expecting the best. I really am. We'll see. It's reading. I'm trying to read. Go to the screen. Uh, still sounds like it's grinding a little bit, but, but, fuck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That, my friends, is what the fuck I'm talking about. I bought this bad boy for like $60 ship with two controllers. I'll show a picture of that, uh, that eBay listing now. Sorry, I'm moving the camera around and bumping the, the mic, but. What I'm probably gonna do is uh, just to make sure that this thing is good to go and last for a while, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, um, I'm gonna remove that motor and give it like a, a grease bath if that makes any sense just kind of let that shit seep in so it doesn't get uh, jammed up again I don't know what would make it jam up in the first place maybe just years of non-use but um, I've had that happen to a couple of uh, it was a turbo turbo duo and a PC engine duo had the same issue where the motor was locked up and I would just like force it with a 9 volt battery and then it would start working again so there's that um, I don't know, I couldn't tell you quite honestly if that was a permanent fix or not, I hope it is. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit more treatment on it, give it a little bit of a alcohol, or not an alcohol, but a, uh, a grease bath, and uh, hopefully that'll keep it going for the wrong, long run. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Son of a bitch. All right, so what I didn't wanna do was go to bed with this thing like this. Um, it only took a few minutes, I figured, I don't wanna go to bed and leave it messed up and wonder if I could have fixed it if I had just put a couple more minutes into it. So I removed the motor, uh, I cleaned it with some contact cleaner or electronics cleaner, this stuff right here. I just sprayed that in all the little holes. Um, 
I used the uh, battery to run the motor up and back and then I gave it a little bath with some WD-40 and then I greased the gears up with some of that um, silicon grease and I'm going to try it out and see what happens. When I was running it up and back it was real smooth so let's see if that actually does what I hope it was going to do. So we got the game powered on. Take a look at the screen. And, oh. That sounds even worse. Damn. That's no bueno. Alright, so third time's a charm. I removed a lot of the grease. I put way too much on there. And I also made sure that the gears were seated the way they were supposed to be. I don't think I did that last time. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Still sounds pretty bad. I mean, it's starting, but it doesn't sound good. Still grinding along. See if it at least gets past the point that it was at before. Every time I would start the game and it got to that point where Gex was falling, there was like a bunch of static, it would freeze up. So it all started so simply. I had just finished my usual morning routine of nude funker size. Oh, that's hilarious. Nude funker size. Not really. Actually, that's why this game probably failed because it's really stupid. Well, still stuttering along. That's not good. Hmm. So the second option that I have is that I do have a four parts FZ10 around here where the laser no shit does not work. And uh, I have not been able to find a cheap laser for it. So what I might do is just swap the uh, swap the motors out. Is it going to get past this part? Oh snap, it's getting past it. So I don't know, it might just be taking some time for the grease to kind of work its way into the, the motor. I don't know. But, I mean, I can't leave it like that. This one's going to be for sale at some point. Obviously, I don't want to leave it, you know, kind of iffy. So, um, I'm probably going to revisit this one a little bit later. But I'll go ahead and upload this video now just to throw it out there and see if it helps anybody who's having an issue with this sort of thing. But, um, it works. It's better than it was before, but it's not perfect. So we'll keep at it and see if we can get it perfect. All right, so this copy of Gex I was using has a little crack on the edge right there, you can see. So that might be why this piece of shit was stuttering and sputtering. Let's turn this autofocus back on. So we're gonna put that off to the side. We've got another copy of Gex in this 3DO that I've been working on the last few days. We're going to go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Go to the screen and you'll hear that as I put this microphone by the system. That there is no grinding. These things take a while to load. It's kind of ridiculous. 
all right there's our game so we're gonna go and uh, wait until it gets to the last spot that it usually stopped on before and see what happens So this is good, no stuttering whatsoever. Yet, we'll see, I'll speak too soon. This is about where it would start in the past. So, no issues. Give it a sec. All right. I'm gonna take my finger off the, uh, the button right there. So, I mentioned that I do have another uh, console that I was using for parts that is so on this one the laser didn't work at all and I was not able to find one cheap enough to justify buying a laser so what we did was I took the motor from that one if we can get some damn focus on this biatch this is the old motor this one honestly after it was unseized, I, I guarantee you this was not the problem. This piece right here was actually the problem. So if you look at the bottom side of the disk drive, let me move that light so it's not super, super bright. And not in my face either. All right, so this piece right here would sit in here. This is the laser. Two little plastic teeth right here that would uh, guide the laser along these grooves right here and that was what was making the noise I could not figure out what exactly it was about it that was doing it I tried cleaning it off uh, didn't look like this is not the one that was clean by the way this one's pretty gross but uh, I tried cleaning this off I tried cleaning this off again tried readjusting this uh, nothing would work. It would just keep on making that loud ass noise. So I just finally got fed up with it and just pulled the, the one from the other uh, the extra console and it worked. So um, eventually I'm going to try to find another laser for this. Uh, the cheapest one I could find was like 40 bucks and I'm not paying that much just for a laser. So I'm going to have to keep my eye out. I know there's some older uh, PC disk drives that have the same laser in it. So I'm going to have to do some research and keep my eye out for those too. But I'm going to try to do this as cheap as possible, but I'll try that eventually again. I'll, I'll go ahead and readjust this and see exactly what it was that was making the noise. But right now, I'm just trying to get this thing out of here, to be honest with you. Um, I've got $61 invested in this one, and it came with uh, two controllers and uh, power cord. And I think it came with AV cables. I don't remember exactly, but... So that crappy copy of Gex was a throw-in. It was actually stuck on the top of the uh, door right here. And I don't even think the seller knew it was there. But that's probably how it got cracked up. So that was kind of a bonus. That one, what I spent, I spent $53 shipped on that one. So $61.53, I got $114 invested in two of these. Again, one came with a power cord, one came with two controllers and, and the uh, instruction book actually, which is the one that was actually good for the most part. Uh, and then $53 for the one that I just used for parts. So 114 bucks invested is not bad. I usually sell these for like 170 shipped. So there's a little bit of profit to be made and I'll still have the one for parts. So eventually I can make some uh, some profit on that. So, so this was uh, not quite the fix that I was looking for. Um, I feel like I kind of cheated because I used parts for from another system that I had laying around and Odds are most people aren't going to have an extra FZ10 lying around to fix another FZ10, but I mean it is fixed, so um, hopefully that does actually help somebody. If I do get around to fixing this one uh, and figuring out what was making the grinding noise on that and actually find a laser for it, I'll post an update video on that. But again, hopefully at least what I did show as far as unseizing the motor and then uh, if it's making a grinding noise, it might help somebody somewhere along the line kind of diagnose what exactly the issue was. So if it's of help to somebody, then it's worth putting a video up, even though it wasn't <laughs> the greatest video. And it was a little annoying going through this this week. It's been a rough, rough week at work. I don't need to tell you.
hopefully if this helps somebody diagnose their issue then it's worth putting a video up even though it certainly is not the most high quality of videos out there so if you did enjoy this and it did help you out leave a comment and let me know uh, what your issue was thanks for watching